Uh, so we can try to base ourselves on the appearance of the different organs. So, for example, we can see the cardiac activity after 23 to 25 days. So, again, here that we will see some movement at the level of the chest of the fetus. Then we'll see the fetal movement after 35 days, the skeleton after 33 days. Um, the stomach and the urinary bladder will be filled with fluid, so anechoic like we can see here, the urinary bladder of the fetus. So then it will appear after 35 days. So all these criteria can try to uh, help us to um, uh, determine the date of the pregnancy and then the date of the, the parturition. But then, of course, it's much more difficult. Uh, it's quite difficult to do and uh, to do it with precision. So the advantages of ultrasonography in those pregnancies is that it's more sensitive than radiography. Uh, we can determine the fetal variability by looking at the heart beats and heart rates. We can try to determine the fetal age, but as I said, it's quite difficult. And we can try to determine if there is resorption or abortion, for example. These advantages is that often the detection will be not... Uh, won't be earlier than uh, with a good palpation. And uh, the uh, fetal numbers estimation will be generally inaccurate, especially in the late part of the pregnancy or if there is a large number of, uh, fetal, uh, of fetuses because then, of course, it's uh, difficult to count if there is uh, more, than, uh, more than two or three, for example, then it will be really difficult. So what we can look at is the embryonic resorption and the fetal abortion. So before 35 days of gestation, we call that embryonic resorption. And after 35 days, it's called an abortion. The uh, result will be the same, is that we will have a reduction in the volume and a collapse of the vesicle and uh, with an inward burging of the uterine wall. So you can see it here, for example. Normally, if it was viable, it should be filled with fluid and it should be very round, of course. And here you see that it's uh, really collapsed and uh, this inward bulging is typical of resorption. The fluid inside then we can become much more increased in echogenicity because of the disintegration of the embryo. And uh, if it is after 23 to 25 days, we can see the absence of heartbeats at the level of the embryo or the fetus. And then we can say, OK, that it's uh, not viable anymore. We can also try to evaluate the fetal distress uh, with ultrasonography. So it will be mostly when uh, it will be the time of uh, the parturition. So then if there is uh, the, the work as started but then no puppies or no uh, kittens are coming out uh, then to determine if uh, it's urgent to do a, a cesarean section or not we can try to evaluate the fetal heart rate and if the fetal heart rate is uh, lower than 180 uh, beats per minute for example then it's a sign of fetal distress and then the dog uh, should be uh, brought to surgery directly to do a c-section and uh, not to wait um, so then it's of course more uh, a problem to wait for the fetus if uh, for example you want to try uh, nocitocin treatment uh, then it's not recommended if the fetal heart rate is already very low then it's better to do a, a c-section immediately Then we can look at the ovaries with the ultrasonography. Uh, so it's less common, of course, eh, but um, because well, most of the female dogs or cats are spayed and there is no ovaries anymore. So that's not something we do uh, routinely. But uh, in dogs that are not spayed, uh, then we can look for them if we palpate a big abdominal mass, if we suspect an ovarian tumor. Uh, if there is a persistent oestrus or a persistent anostrus uh, or some vulvar discharge, so all signs that there could be a problem with the female reproductive tract. So normally the ovaries are located just close to the kidneys. So like we can see here, 
they have uh, here that's the left kidney and here that's the left ovary so we can see that they have a quite a superficial location uh, at this level and they are surrounded by fat so often they are quite small and because they are surrounded by this fat it's they may be quite difficult uh, to see uh, with the no with ultrasound when they are normal they can change in aspect with the estrus cycle so there will be some follicular develop development with uh, some uh, uh, anechoic cyst that will will become visible within the ovary and then there will be the ovulation and then the corpus luteum will be visible and the corpus luteum is also um, composed of apoechoic to anechoic cavities so um, what we will look mainly uh, for in those uh, ovarian problems it's in case, for example, of persistent estrus, we will look for polycystic ovaries, like we can see here. So with uh, multiple cysts uh, visible. So if there are more than one centimeter, those cysts, they are more suspicious of being polycystic ovaries and not just the normal follicles uh, of uh, uh, the normal estrus cycle. In general, we will see this condition bilaterally, so both ovaries will be affected. Then we can see some neoplasia, so it can be carcinoma, some teratoma. So here we have an example of a neoplasia with the ovary measuring uh, two to three centimeters, so that's definitely too big. And it's an isoechoic mass with some hypoechoic cavities. Uh, that are measuring in this case it was around six uh, seven millimeter um, so that's uh, quite typical of neoplasia because uh, an ovary uh, with the cyst wouldn't look like that the cyst would be much more uh, anechoic like, like in this area and um, uh, here is just a hypoechoic necrotic area secondary to the neoplasia mm -hmm.